Well, have you ever wrote a letter? I know it seems like something of the past. It's all email today or social media. I don't know if folks write much today, especially letters. But thinking about it, have you ever wrote a letter so somebody would stop sending? get their act together and do the kind of things that are right. Well, one of the reasons that John is writing this letter is just for that purpose. Notice what he says in 1 John chapter 2, and we're just going to look at a couple verses this morning. Now, notice this. He says, my little children, and by the way, you can see the affection that the apostle has for the brethren. These things I write unto you, so you said not. Now, I didn't look at the original language, but it's a presumption here. I ought to have done it, but one way or the other, they're to stop sinning or not to sin. And, uh, you know, that's not a bad idea, is it, to stop sinning? It's a kind of an interesting thing in the liberal kind of thinking that you can go ahead and sin, and it really doesn't matter. In Romans chapter 6 and verse number 1, shall we sin that grace may abound? Of course, that's a rhetorical question in the original language, and the answer is obvious, isn't it? You don't sin, so grace may abound. Now, there is grace, but you don't sin because of that. So what Paul was saying in Romans chapter 6 is the same thing that John is saying here. He's writing uh, is that you don't sin. Now, notice here he goes on to say, if any man does sin, now that just takes us back to what we talked about yesterday, uh, the manner of life of a Christian person, a real believer is a certain kind of living, a holy living, a life that's pleasing to the Lord, walking in the light. But, you know, there's times we do sin, and that's what he's talking about here, not a life of sin, but there are times when we do sin, and what John says is when we do sin, we have an advocate, and that's an interesting word way back there, it just simply meant someone that comes for your support, it could have been a counselor or a lawyer, but here's someone who comes to your aid, and the one who is coming to our aid is the Lord Jesus Christ, our high priest, intercessor, who intercedes for us, Hebrews chapter 7. So what he's saying here is that when we do sin, we have an advocate, Jesus Christ the righteous, and then he goes into the next verse saying he is our propitiation. Now that's a word we never use, but the word propitiation actually could mean two things, either appeasement, the idea of appeasement, of course, is you bring a gift, and some of you fellows may have done that. You brought your wife some chocolate or flowers to appease her anger. And so sometimes that's the idea of propitiation, to appease someone who is angry. But the other meaning, which is a little bit more uh, used, is the idea of atonement. And that's the idea here, I believe, that Christ is the basis of our atonement or forgiveness of sin. So so here you go. Uh, listen, you need, you need to live life as holy as God wants you to be. There's on occasion sometimes uh, when you sin, and that happens to all of us, and you have to be reminded here that we have an advocate, one who comes to our support uh, that helps us through those kind of situations. So that's a pretty big thought for today, isn't it? I mean, it's important for you to understand uh, it's good advice and it's good wisdom to stop doing things that you shouldn't do. However, there are times, aren't there, that when we do fail, and what John is assuring us here is that God's grace, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, can help you through that and forgive you. So those are something to think about today. This book of 1 John is really profound and has some deep meaning. Well, that's something to think about, isn't it? See you tomorrow.